Woods, a bar in Chicago, opened. It was called the Lone Star Saloon, and its manager was Mickey Finn. However, the bar was shut down in 1903 after Mickey Finn was accused of and arrested for drugging and then robbing his customers. One of the waitresses would slip chloral hydrate, a sedative, into the drinks of unsuspecting customers. And when they consumed this drink, it would leave the victims unconscious, and they would be dragged into the back room of the bar where they were robbed and disposed of in an alleyway. When these victims woke up, they had no recollection of what had happened the night before, making it extremely difficult to pinpoint Finn. And as ridiculous as this story may sound, we still see cases of drug-facilitated crimes today. About one in four women in college will be victims of sexual assault. And those in the age range of 16 to 20 are four times as likely than the rest of the population of being victims of sexual assault. And in the majority of these cases, some drug or alcohol is involved. This issue is so severe worldwide that in some parts of Latin America, buses have signs that warn tourists not to accept food or drinks from strangers. These drugs are especially dangerous because they are odorless, colorless, and tasteless in a drink, making it near impossible to tell when a beverage has been contaminated. Even further, these drugs leave the body extremely quickly, making them hard to detect after the fact. Because this issue is so prevalent and because it's so important in my age range, I decided to take it on in a research project I conducted last year. I sought out creating a device that could detect the presence of these date rape drugs. I'd gotten the idea when I was reading an article over the summer. Uh, a student was at a party and was given a drink and was wary of it, but consumed it anyway. And he became a victim of drug-facilitated sexual assault, the official term for date rape. And this article got me thinking. Why wasn't there some type of device that could detect these drugs, let the student know that his drink had been contaminated? And so I just went on Google and started researching. And I checked Amazon and other major retailers, and I couldn't find a single product that would have been usable in a, life, in a real life situation. And so I sent a text out to my science partner, Annabelle, and we both agreed that this was worth testing. And so we went to school that fall already to start working with the idea. We talked to our science work coordinator, Ms. Stutzman, and our AP chemistry teacher, Ms. Karpovich, about the idea, and started brainstorming what we could do. My vision for this project was a strip that could be dipped into a drink and change color upon reacting with a date rape drug. And so this format was something that I thought was unisex, practical, and efficient. And so with this in mind, we had plenty of limitations along the way. We had to use our high school chemistry lab and the chemicals on hand. And I had no experience doing lab work before this. Um, I think the last time I did something was a vinegar and baking soda volcano in third grade. <laughs> and so, yeah. And so, with this in mind, we decided to create an alcohol detecting strip first because this was something that was manageable in the time period that we had. We used a reaction that was used in primitive police breathalyzers. These orange crystals in a machine would turn green when a suspect blew into them and had alcohol in that person's breath. And so, over the next two months, and through trial and error, mostly error, we finally were able to create a strip that turned from orange to green when coming in contact with date rape drugs, uh, well, alcohol in this case. And so, we placed in our local fair, and Annabelle graduated, and I continued to work with this project this summer, starting researching you know, more types of date rape drugs to expand the scope of this strip. And so there are a wide variety of these drugs out there. There are those that are prescription drugs, those that are over-the-counter, and those that are just illegal in the United States. And the three main ones that I came across in my personal research were ketamine, which is an animal tranquilizer, GHB, and then rohypnol, which I think you all know is rupees. And so I chose to work with an analog of GHB. An analog is a drug that reacts similarly to and has the same effects in the body as another drug. So in this case, this analog of GHB would react into the body the same way as GHB, giving the same effects. And so I was able to order this drug because it is a paint thinner and industrial solvent in the United States. And so I worked with this compound over these few months, and now I'm in the process of making this new strip so that it won't give any false positives, so it won't react with alcohol, juices, or mixers in a drink. And so I only see this project expanding from here. I'd like to um, add to the scope of this project by letting it detect a wide variety of date rape drugs so that I can detect all three of these drugs and more. Furthermore, I hope that some product it's available in bars, restaurants, and pharmaceutical stores so that it becomes common practice to test your drink before consuming it. 
Thank you.